Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Hue virtual chat. Yes, we're having a little bit of fun here. Um, I hope you like the background. It's a little bit pre Halloween. Um, so we are going to be talking about Halloween and how it's all going to look and play out. Of course, it's very strange right now in this whole COVID-19 world that we live in. But we're also going to be talking about witches. So I find this kind of fascinating. These are these mysterious people that obviously, as history has it, have been portrayed that these women known as witches were burned at the stake, but they still live on within us. We'll find out more. So let's open the doors to our amazing women here joining us for another virtual chat. I want to say a big hello to Linda. Hey, and there's Rami. Hi, Rami. Hey. Hello. Hey, we're here. Hi, Rami. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, good to cyber see ya. Yeah, I know. And I, I love the white. That's that's so not you. It's so clean and no, I'm not I'm not making a comment about you, but you know, because normally in your kind of like in this dark kind of Oh, know. in my old house, yeah. 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 So it was all oh, wood. Yes, all wood and you know, guitars yeah, and now my house is white. Yeah. Yeah. And clean and fresh. <laughs> clean. Cleaning slate and good to see you, Linda. Wow. Nice to see you, Tracy. Hi, Linda. Hi, Rami. Yeah, yeah. Nice to see yeah. you. So, you know what? I'm. We're going now, and hopefully, you know, some of the other women will join us. But if not, we've got a lot to talk about. I'm actually going to first. I know because Rami, you've got like a big kind of musical Halloween extravaganza for us, you know. And please, you know, let's let's make sure that we can do it right. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'll be fine. I think the weather's going to be crap for like a week and then it's going to go nice again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so tell us about, yeah. So tell us about curbside concerts and what's coming up for Halloween. Yeah. Have you heard of curbside concerts much at all? Yep. Not, yeah. Not, you have not Linda, heard? Has, Linda hasn't. So feel like, okay. Well, yeah. So well for anyone watching as well, eventually like there's good. So curbside concerts is this brilliant idea that my friend Matt masters came up with. He, uh, when COVID started, live music wasn't able to happen so there were live music fans that couldn't see live music and musicians that had no work basically it was just that simple so he just said why don't i figure out a way to innovate something that would be one plus one equals two and uh it was really cool he just came up with this idea for curbside concerts where i guess it would be like kind of the skip the dishes of music you know, where you just, you, you go to the website, you order the artist you want, you, uh, you choose the date and time and we facilitate it. And, uh, and then an artist shows up and plays 45 minutes at a, a safe distance, COVID safe, completely socially distance. We follow all the bylaws. Anyway, that was going really well for him. So then eventually, yeah, he asked me if I would start it in Manitoba. So in June, I started doing it in Manitoba and I'm, I'm producing here and it's been going super well, obviously with the weather changing now, it's slowing down a little, but we do, uh, we had a wonderful summer and we have no reason not to continue it when the weather changes again in the spring. So whether there's COVID or not, we're going to keep this, this completely going. Uh, and you know what, it just brings so much, um, I guess, hope too, right, Rami, to all of these musicians and artists that, I mean, their livelihoods, right, have, have been at yeah. stake for so long. Um, but again, um, on Halloween, you're doing yes. something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We are, uh, we, well, I wanted to do something different because I just thought, you know, Halloween's completely different this year. Everyone that was having, used to have Halloween parties or Halloween get togethers or even trick or treating, we're not sure how that's gonna look exactly this year. Um, I just thought, well, we can still celebrate it. And because the weather will likely be good enough for a bonfire hangout, um, you know, get your under 10 restrictions, still good to go. You can have, you know, four or five friends sitting around and having a bonfire hangout in your yard. And, uh, and a curbside concert. And if we come to perform for you at, at, uh, at your yard or your deck or your boulevard, um, we'll, we paired up with Original 16 and they are gonna bring a free 15 pack of beer hand delivered to each concert that are on Halloween. So free beer, live music, bonfire and some friends on Halloween, pretty good <laughs> deal. I think it's brilliant and I came up with it myself. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so that means at least you get a you know a 15 right for yourself <laughs> well yeah i mean if nobody else wants it i'll take it yeah no but i mean there's we have 12 artists on the roster they're all incredible and you know jd edwards sierra noble andrina turen kevin hogg like there it's it's uh we have two of the girls from sweet alibi 
Jess and Amber and uh, Jamie Buckbro, tons of great artists, amazing. And so you can choose any one of them and we're willing to do, you know, two or three a night. So ideally we can do, you know, 30 shows that night. And that's a lot of beer for original 16 to have to fork up, but that's the plan they made with me. So, so they're gonna have to do it. But we do have limited spaces. So I am encouraging people, it's starting to book now. So I am okay. encouraging people that are interested to go to the Curbside Concerts website, which is just curbsideconcerts.ca and, and we'll facilitate it for you. I'm, I'm the Winnipeg gal to talk to, so I'll set it up. Oh, you are amazing. Well, you're going to have to come up, you know, with some more brilliant ideas, I think, for 2021, too. Yeah. Well, let's think about, uh, let's New Year's Eve. Let's think of something we could do. For well, New I already Year's have, I already have something in the works for Christmas. <laughs> We're working uh, with a choir, a couple local choirs to do Christmas caroling, curbside Aww. Christmas caroling. Yeah, which I think will be really great because a lot of people aren't going to make it to their church or, or, or their group gatherings that they would used to. So it's, it's really been brilliant to bring live music to people who just otherwise wouldn't have seen it this year. And on top of that, a lot of these people actually that we started performing for, we realized they wouldn't have really gone to see live music much at all and missed it because they're not waiting till 10 p.m. They live in Enola. They live in, you know, uh, Lactabani or wherever. We were doing a lot of cottage country this year and a lot of rural Manitoba. They're not going to drive in at 10 p.m. to see a band that they like. So uh, so it's been really great for kids. Dogs have been, you know, there and elderly. And it's been gr I've just I've, we've had people cry at our shows when we've shown up just how thankful they are to have us there. And so it's been really rewarding. Ross, I mean, how many people do, do whoever's hiring you, do they have like a group of people in their backyard or is it just a small family? Like how right. many people? It's varied over the summer, but we, we follow because we're really strictly about safety and safety first, a hundred percent. That's our whole mandate um, because we, we follow the restrictions. So we insist that you do as well. So there, there have been some great gatherings where there's been maybe up to 30 people, but we've been encouraged social distancing. And some people have even put out pylons, you know, to say they've measured in pylon. And, but if it is a, a family and they're, they're comfortable, that's fine with me. You know, if you're, you know, 20 people sitting in a, a yard, um, we try to encourage, because we bring battery powered speakers, we're not running power or anything like, we just try to encourage that we, we make sure we keep the artists safe as well. So right. we distance ourselves from the audience. We, we set up on the boulevard if possible. If it's a deck, no one's on the deck, they're in the yard. And, and so it could be a, as big a group as really you wanted as long as the space accommodated it. But with the new restrictions, we are staying 10 and under um, invited to the house because it okay. does disclude the family household. So you can have 15 if you have five in your house, but one is the artist. So you can really only invite nine people safely to your yard at this point to follow the COVID bylaws. Right. Thanks, Thanks for that question. Leave that <laughs> a good question. My mind's going. I'm like, oh, okay. Like hell yeah, let's go, Linda. <laughs> Got a book right here. I want to book somebody. This is so fun. I love it. No, it's really great. It's just been amazing. I'm so thankful that I've been asked to be part of it. And really it's it kind of feels like a no-brainer. I don't know why we weren't doing this before. Why were we not I mean I know there's house concerts and things like that, but really because of the fact that you can go on a, a roster page and choose it and have a producer arrange it for you and that they can just, you know, instead of having to sit at the house and have everybody pay a fee, you know, the, the host can, you know, they can ask for some support for the money if they want to from their guests or their neighbors. But on the front street, I mean, sometimes you'll see four or five houses down, different people sitting on their front, on their front mm -hmm. steps as well. And it's just been such a beautiful experience. I'm so thankful to be, best job I ever had. For sure. <laughs> Love it. So Love I want to know, Rami, are you on the roster too? Like I you? am. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to be. I, I really told them I didn't want to be because I wanted to wear the producer hat and really just help get everybody else employed. But uh, the, the owners and the founder and the, the bosses that be really, really strongly suggested I get on the roster. And not to mention that it's made me part of the, I understand the experience a lot more now to be able to produce it and understand it, but it's been amazing. I, they're some of my favorite shows I've ever done. I've had people, like I said, cry that they couldn't believe I was at their home and on their yard, you know, and, and, uh, and just how thankful they were because of how things have been so tough, you know, yeah. so to bring a little joy and excitement and family time and, and uh, just laughter, you know, and I'm, cause I'm pretty funny, right? So my show's oh, yeah. kind of funny. <laughs> It's PG too, so you know, might have to cover the it PG. Is PG. I can I can do PG, believe it or not. I can do PG. Oh yeah, oh. you're sad, Robin. That's okay. Oh, so I won't go, I'll go P, I won't go PG 
in private. I'll go really crass, but I'm, you know, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> I think you need to meet Robin, who you will. I think, you know, between you and Robin, I think there's definitely uh, chemistry there, you know, doing between jokes and music. Oh, I'm already on the website. I'm like, I'll be in touch today. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, no, so we're still going through, we'll go as long as the weather will allow and that anyone's like, I have certain artists that are willing to go in the, into winter. So, I mean, that's just crazy talk because I'm, I'm not, but, <laughs> but I have some artists who are like, yeah, if the snow flies and people still want to sit outside with a fire pit and, and blankets, I'll still perform. So that's pretty cool. And, uh, but Halloween seems to be like one of the best, last big hurrahs for curbside, in my opinion, this year, but yeah. hopefully, hopefully we're just entertaining everyone all over the city a few times a night. <laughs> well, we'll get the word out there. It's curbsideconcerts.ca, correct? Yes, you got .ca. it. Okay. So. Uh, so we're going to join in this Robin. conversation now. Hi, I want to say hi, Robin, and hi, Susie. Hi, Susie. Um, so do you like my background? I like, <laughs> that's a nightmare on, I don't know what that movie was. but I kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. But anyways, um, talking about Halloween, uh, but I want to throw it now to Linda, because Linda came up with a very interesting topic that I knew nothing about and how it can all sort of apply to where we are today so it's about witches ladies it is about witches and i just discovered this concept and i don't know if anybody's heard of it before but when i heard about it i just loved it it's called the witch wound and i don't know if anybody's heard of this but the idea of the witch wound is that we have a subconscious awareness that our ancestors, women, were burned at the stake for being magical, for being outspoken, for being healers, for being artists, for being powerful women. And that all over the world, unfortunately, still to this day, women are killed or victims of violence for being powerful, outspoken, um, and, you know, all around badass women. Yeah, I've been called a witch. <laughs> a compliment. <laughs> you hope. <laughs> and that we carry this witch wound in us. And that if you've ever, and I think probably most of us can relate to this, if you've ever had to have a difficult conversation or speak up when you uh, saw something going wrong that you didn't like or that you had to have a confrontation of some kind and you have this body sensation of fear and nervousness and holding back and tightening and that real self-protectiveness that comes over that holds you back from saying what's on your mind the idea of the witch wound is that that is um, that is part of our our subconsciousness that we know that being outspoken and saying what we think or being just a witchy woman can result in violence, can result in death, and that that is one of the reasons that holds us back from speaking. And the reason that I love this concept so much is that it makes you feel not alone. That so often we are so critical of ourselves thinking, why didn't I say that? Or if I just had more courage or why don't I have more confidence or why am I always filled with so much self doubt? And, you know, I wish I had more, you know, bravery and stuff. And it can make you feel really alone. Like you're the only person who has this problem. And the idea of, thinking about this as more of a global um, problem, you're not alone. It is societal. It is um, the messages from the patriarchy that started back in the witch hunt days that, you know, the doctors and the patriarchy were like, who are these midwives and why do they have so much power? And why do they, you know, why are they in control of the healing and the medicine? Let's take over and uh, let's start to you know make sure that women know their place and you know they are not uh they are not they don't have the power so to me it's this this really rich uh texture of history 
and understanding of where all of this came from so that when I'm confronted with something like, oh, I have to make that phone call today and it's really uncomfortable and I really don't want to do it, remind myself that I can heal that, that we can all heal that. And But part of any process of healing is becoming aware of the problem, of becoming aware of you know, of the situation of why we hold back. And, um, you know, I mean, it's layered, there's, you know, there's so many layers to it, but just having that little understanding of, of, um, of why we hold ourselves back can give us that idea of like, man, I can break through and man, I can own being a witch and I can own being like a powerful woman and know that, that the nervousness that we often have to speak up or to take up space or to be seen, um, be heard is a, a normal part of the process. That just because you feel nervous, just because you feel um, anxious or like hiding or like protecting yourself, it doesn't mean that anything's gone wrong in you. It just means that's a normal part of what you're going to feel when you're speaking up to recognize, oh, here's that nervousness, here's that feeling in my body, and then to do it anyway. And to and, and that kind of practice of doing it anyway, even when you are, uh, what do they say, um, speaking even when your voice shakes, I, I can't remember who said that, but, but speaking even when your voice shakes when you start to do it more and more and you get more practice, that is part of the healing process. So that's my contribution to the, the, uh, the conversation today is healing the witch wound. It's really, yeah, it's got me fired up. <laughs> awesome. I love it. I loved any, any, uh, any moat, any, what's the word I'm looking for? Any forward motion towards uh, just speaking your mind at all times. It's really your the only thing that could happen is you find out who your friends are and who your foes are. You know, like you just you just speak your mind and if people don't like it, next. You know, and you just stay true to yourself as long as you're not a bee witch. <laughs> witch That's what I was gonna bee. say. <laughs> but I mean, um, Rami though, you've always had and I and I call it a gift of being able just to say what you need to say. And I appreciate too, because Susie is so eloquent in what she says. And, it, you know, in half the time, oh no, all the time I go, oh my God, I wish I said that. Or I wish I could be like Rami and just boom, I'm in your face. And then, think, hey, think. Yes. that's how I do it. I just spew shit out my, there we go. See, there it was. Just See, I know, me. I know. That's what, that's what I love about you. And I mean, you haven't, and you haven't changed. You haven't, you haven't through all this. And, you know, and I, and I can say too, Rami, you've been through a lot. And I mean, these, you know, all of these people here are, have so much information and, and so much, I guess, insight, you know, Robin and Linda and Susie, they all come from different angles, but it, it all makes so much sense. And especially, in, I think, obviously in these times and now, I mean, having this beautiful Thanksgiving long weekend and you know, anxiety is just like through the roof and so are our COVID numbers and everything like that. We're all thinking, you know, everything's going to become, you know, a lot more condensed and, and maybe back. But uh, I know it's like now moving forward, how do we do that? And, you know, you're doing it through music, which is so amazing. But uh, yeah, now we got to think about Halloween. So Susie, are your kids going out? Well, I guess it'd be just your daughter or, or are the boys still in that age of? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, actually. Um, I, I, feel, <laughs> I posted on Facebook that I bought the candy for Halloween. I hope it lasts to Halloween. Um, <laughs> it's not looking good right now, I got to say. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of taking it, you know, day by day. I have, I have no issue if they go out for Halloween this year. I mean depending on how it's going to be done you're not they're going to be wearing masks you're not going to be getting closer to people than you would be getting to them in a in a grocery store kind of setting or even at school 
Um, they don't have to eat the treats that night. They can let them sit there for a couple of days if you're nervous about touching them or anything like that. But again, I'm waiting to hear what our caseload is going to be by that date. And of course, if um, if the provincial government comes out with some kind of um, advice or, you know, uh, line saying that, you know what, maybe we should skip Halloween this year. Yeah, but my kids are, my kids at this point are just happy to be in school. We've had two out of three kids having to go for COVID tests in the last couple of weeks. So it's just been mayhem waiting for those results and trying to get them, uh, you know, tested and then back uh, well enough to go back to school this week. So for the first time in I think two and a half weeks, three weeks, we have all kids in school today. So I, I, that's to me, to me a minor miracle today. I know, uh, it's win. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, I don't, yeah, I, I'm like with you. Well, you know, we all my kids are, are adults now, but uh, um, I, cause I heard like, are you supposed to have your treats in baggies? Cause you can't have out, uh, the candies have to be wrapped. Like, I, yeah, so I mean, most of the candies come in wrappers anyway, and I love like uh, CGOB this morning posted this one dad who's done like this, this like shoot that he has from like his front landing and you can like pop the candy in there and then you can put your bag at the bottom and the candy will land in there like that's so great. So I mean, people are going to be creative and going to try and get uh, in the spirit of, you know, maintaining physical distancing and still having a good time. So I mean, I think whatever you're comfortable with at this point when it comes to Halloween, as far as provincial directives go, you have to do what you have to do, you know? And the kids are probably gonna get dressed up at school anyway. So mm -hmm. I don't know what the evening part's gonna look like, but we're ready regardless of the scenario, so. I know a lot of people have been talking about, well, I mean, it's already co like COVID friendly Halloween because they're wearing masks anyway, but right. they're just not wearing masks that cover their nose and mouth breathing. Do you know what I mean? They're- Yeah, yeah. That's but I mean, the kids, the kids, if they, if they dress up for Halloween, like my kids would wear their masks over regardless of what oh, their costume is. So it is, yeah. especially like growing up here in Winnipeg, as we all know, Halloween costumes are for the birds anyway, because you put a park on top of it, yeah. anyway, you know, which so has happened have, as well. Yeah. You, you have your mask at least, you know, so now you have your parka, your mask, and then a mask on a mask. <laughs> That's what I am. I don't know. Between the weather and the costumes, you have to get ready to pivot. So, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I feel bad for kids this year because it is, it is, a, my daughter's 20 now, so I don't have to worry about that. But I would, I would be concerned right now. Like the kids going, can't we go? Like, you know, to take away Halloween, that's just a, that's a hard hit for a kid. Oh, yeah. I know. It's a rough one. Yeah. Well, I mean, good. Thank goodness, uh, Susie, your kids are safe. And I know it's crazy. I mean, I think that's why the testing, um has gone up so much too right because oh for sure people, yeah yeah and then your yeah because if your kid if your child even has a sniffle you know like uh if you go to the self-assessment tool and you have more than one or two symptoms in each of the categories like you have to go get tested so i mean there's there's no uh work around it kind of thing and um yeah there's no doubt that the kids in school and of course it's cold and flu season so you know kids are you know catching stuff at school and bringing it home and yeah so you know, just trying to keep on the kids about washing their hands and washing their faces when they get home from school and just keeping their hands away from their faces at all times. And yeah. <laughs> all crazy. So Robin, you've been again, sitting there, although you've been laughing a bit. I, I, I probably assume you and Rami are like exchanging some sort of, yeah, she's nodding. Yes. See, I know I, I am here to bring together <laughs> like minds, you know. <laughs> Oh, so is Halloween a favorite time for you, Robin? Well, it's really weird. Growing up in Australia, right? Nobody gives a shit about Halloween. Like, <laughs> and and you watch all the movies and everyone's like, oh, and Australians are like, what is wrong with those people? Um, you but, in Australia? No, not growing up, but I know that my, um, like my niece's kids are doing that now. So the that little generation... North America's infiltrated them. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, well, it's nowhere near as big as here. So like watching it here is is kind of, it's fun. It's a bit surreal. I'm like, I want to be five and go out in a costume. So last year I may have dressed up as Crocodile Dundee and gone <laughs> wandering the streets. Um, and Charlotte and I went to a social 
around Halloween where she went as Linda Kozlowski and I went as Croc and had a massive, that's not a knife, this is a knife. Um, which, you know, it doesn't always mean people are going to be nice to you when you pull out a big fat knife, but, uh, you know, it was. But they're definitely going to give you the candy. Yeah, give me the candy. <laughs> um, I, th I think, uh, you know, I, I'm hearing people talk about this year, right? And I'm like, well, it's how do we adapt to something that's just a little different? And mm -hmm. missing it one year doesn't mean we're going to miss it for a lifetime, although it might be next year too, I don't know. Um, but it's, and, and I don't have kids, so I'm, I'm not in that space of how, how do I make that happen? But um I am a bit of a goofball, so I'm looking forward to hanging out with my friends who have kids and just being a complete goofball with them so they forget that they're not wandering the streets randomly to strangers' houses, which in any other time of the year, people would be, don't right. do it. That has always blown my mind. Don't, like, the don't, don't talk to strangers except for once a year, go ape shit. Go do it everywhere. <laughs> Every house you can knock on. Walk up to creepy houses with Eat like your food. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. Oh, my. oh well, all we just need just to have, you know, a curbside concert going, you know, for the adults entertainments. Yes. Well, and Linda, you mentioned that Halloween is your favorite time. So why? Absolutely. I you know what? I just I I I relate to just the magic behind it, just the even the um isn't it November 1st that's the Day of the Dead where no. the um I, I'm 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 outing myself as a real woo-woo person here but uh um the the concept that um uh that that night is when the veil between our world and the spirit world is the thinnest mm -hmm. like I just love that like it just you know, being able, like thinking about your ancestors and the people who came before us and just being like that, that shimmering idea of, of the world kind of opening up to me. Why, is just why how is that, that the, the spirit world is closest to us that night? Like where I, at, why is there a cycle? What is that? Like you explain that? I don't understand. I don't know anything about that. I, I cannot explain that. I just love the concept of it. I, I, I don't, I really, honestly, I've just, I've always heard that that was the night. And I think, I don't know. Okay, it's so like, have you ever watched, um, Rami, have you ever watched um, uh, Coco? The Disney movie? No, I don't think so. Okay. So it's, it's a huge <laughs> thing in like Latin American culture and Mexican culture with Dias de las Muertas, which is day of the dead, which happens on November 1st. And it's the day that all the souls that have, um, passed over can uh, be in contact with this earthly plane for you know that time period or whatever okay. and so it talks about what that means to that to that culture and to people who believe that and um, the ability to maybe um, uh, resolve things that weren't necessarily resolved on this plane kind of thing so it's an interesting uh, concept yeah that has yeah, lots of I, ancient I, tradition and all that. I didn't really I didn't really know it connected to Halloween as much as it did. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, will there be a big run on Uji boards then? Instead <laughs> of wandering the streets, we're going to be everyone's at home. That people do that kind of like Ouija board, sort of Halloween y, like creepy, like that's the night that that kind of stuff happens. But I didn't really realize there was a connotation. I mean, I knew that there was something behind Halloween. But uh, where do you think the costumes came in? The costumes, I believe, were. were uh, as I recall, it was part of like a pagan ritual that was um, you're frightening off the dead spirits, the the evil spirits. Like I think that's that's what I recall reading was that mean, like Iron Man dress costume, but I get that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know, like if 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 this veil is opening, you want to like you want to commune with like the good spirits, but there might be the bad spirits, so you're supposed to dress up to frighten them off. Okay, that's that's what I'm thinking, but I could just be making that up. No, that's right. That's right. And it, it comes from an, an ancient Celtic tradition. Okay. And that was, that was adopted by um, Pope Gregory, I think, at some time in the early centuries. And uh, then no November 1st became All, All Souls Day. And that's how it's kind of tied into the Celtic festival on the 31st. Yeah. 
right. everything, everything's yeah. stolen from something else, right? <laughs> it's all pagan. It's all come from the pagan world. And isn't, now this is very traditional too, though, for particularly Canada. I don't know if it's all about across Canada. And Robin, I don't know if you, you've heard of, but gate night is the oh, night yes. before Halloween. Yes. And gate night was, is also like, isn't that also something to do with like the, the spirits are starting to run wild? We just egg no, that's, I mean, that's, 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 yeah, the, the kids are running wild and your houses get yeah, egged. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. how I don't know about gate night. <laughs> I mean, like toilet paper and egg houses and I don't know why it's called gate night or what's maybe the last night to be crazy before the spirits come get you. Uh, something along those lines. Anyway, so yes, uh, to me, I ever have plans on the 30th. <laughs> October is just such an interesting, like all these kind of concepts kind of are colliding and, and I, I don't know, I, I love it. I love it. And wow. you know what it makes me think of too is like, I mean, I'm assuming like, like everyone here has their own business, right? And, you know, it's funny when I said about outing myself as like a woo person, <laughs> um, is I'm thinking about that in terms of business as well. Like how much do you let your audience or your clients or the people uh, who you're serving know who you really are? Like that, you know, like, I, like I'm a business and life coach and I help people with their, you know, business planning and their goals and, and all that kind of stuff. But I'm also somebody who loves talking about witches and the spirit world and all that kind of stuff. Like how much do you let people into your, into your crazy? <laughs> well, that's an, in, that's an interesting question because I think uh, we all, have a persona and you know whether and we do it you you have your professional persona and then you have your personal persona I what well which is what I think um but you're well, right that's your, that was like your job has been to always you know host and 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 uh so you yeah you had to put on a, pers a persona to be professional host mm -hmm. lucky like someone like myself I've never had to have a persona I've just been luckily myself the entire time, which has felt pretty good. It's kind of lucky. Like when I, when I go to work, I don't have to change my clothing and, you know, do my hair differently or speak differently. You know, I felt really lucky about that, no. but I super respect that. Obviously there are different personas for different positions. Yeah. So I want to ask then Linda, so is there an etiquette though, right? About being overtly open or personal like or you know because I, I understand what you're you're asking and my question is so how much do you show of yourself or does that depend on who you're with or the client the the company that you're in and you and that's why I'd love to hear from everyone else too is because you know when you're when you are using social media which we all are right now um, mostly to market or you're using some sort of online thing, especially in COVID. Um, and what my understanding is of an effective social media marketing is that you are developing your know, like, and trust factor with the people who are following you so that you are sharing not just the professional persona, but the, you know, the behind the scenes, the messiness, the, you know, um, the, the things that you are, you know, you like, you're dealing with, uh, not, you know, and you yourself have to define for yourself what the line is of how, you know, some people are really comfortable sharing a lot, some people aren't, and you get to define it yourself. Um, but what do you, like Susie and Robin and Rami, like, what do you, how much do you share or not share? Or how do you say that though, Linda? Because today, actually, I've been really using social media just for curbside concerts whether it's been like I have two of my own Facebook pages and then I've been doing stuff for curbside as well. And I've been like almost drying out my audience, my friends and my fans of music even just because I just keep dr like driving curbside concerts down. And I thought, you know what? It is probably time for me to be a real person again and just say something or do something. And, but the truth is that this morning I, I started a, a 30 day yoga challenge in my house. I might like, I put up a mat and I put like, you know, got this, um, an old TV I had and put it in my spare room and set up this little space. And so I thought, you know what, that's a really good thing to talk about with people just like that. I'm having trouble, you know, like with just sort of starting to settle into winter 
with, with this kind of isolation because, and I'm sure everybody is, because when it was summer, we could sit outside and we could get our fresh air and we could go to, you know, even outdoor get togethers with friends, you could sit far apart. But winter is a little trickier and <clears throat> I'm like, yeah, I have a partner and I'm, I'm happy, but we also are about to drive each other completely insane, you know? So I, I was just writing, like I, I made a post that was pr more personal. That was like, you know, for my body health and my mental health, I've, what are you like, what are we all doing? I've, I've decided to choose a good book to dive into. I'm just trying to do this yoga thing. And well, like, does anyone want to join me on this yoga challenge? And just I decided to, to get off my sort of professional role of trying to promote my business. And just went, wait a minute. Hi, everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how's everybody doing? I'm freaking out, you know? <laughs> so yeah, really, there's, there doesn't have to be a line because everybody at this point really understands that everybody's going through shit. Like everybody's feeling a lot of emotions and, and stressed out. And we, the more we stick together, it would actually make me probably use your business more to yeah. know that you're a human being. You know what I mean? That's on my side type of thing. Yeah. A human being who's losing it and is just like, okay, I just need yoga or something. Mm -hmm. And to me that, that, that sells your business as well, because you're talking about mental health and, and music is such a big part of lifting our spirits up and lifting our, you know, energy up to me that that goes hand in hand, but yeah, that's, yeah. That's interesting. You know what I think it's time to do. I haven't really been a musician online for a while. I think today I'll play a song and record it and put it online for everybody. Oh, you know, why don't, why don't you uh, play us a song right now? No, no. <laughs> I'm not a no. At all. <laughs> What no, about you, Susie? It's a great idea to, to share music just yeah. because of what we can. Uh, yeah. you know, yeah. Well, and you, Susie, and we've had these conversations too. And, you know, because you've got a family too, and, and because of your business being in social media, you know, I've seen your posts and stuff like that. Oh, I was going to ask too, uh, isn't today day one of Prime? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I already posted yes. about that. <laughs> I already posted about how Jeff Bezos doesn't need your money and that you should go support a local business around the corner or something like that. So yeah, I've already done that rant on social. What's that about? Pardon me? What's that about? About Amazon Prime Day. Okay. Yeah. And how instead of supporting Amazon Prime or Amazon, you should go to your local retailer and buy it instead. Otherwise, we're going to have no Canadian retailers left. And people are going to say, oh, well, where did all the Canadian retail go? Uh, through your Amazon orders. That's where it went. So, yeah. Um, but sorry, Tracy, you were, your first part of that question was... Uh, I know. Sorry. I, I know. I threw you off track. No, no I mean, that's okay. But, I mean, you kind of do show glimpses of the true Susie I mean throughout you know whether it's on Twitter or your Instagram but I mean it do you have a hard time um sort of like like you know you, about portraying too much or too little or yeah so I am I am not as open as some bloggers are and I don't I don't share a lot of um, details or pictures of my kids on um, public social media that has never been my bag and um, I really believe that children are entitled to privacy and that they should be in charge of their um, stories and you know as much as they can be you know obviously when it's interesting because you know having navigated social media since these kids were small um, I always ask them now can I post this picture? You know, like that kind of stuff. And instead of just posting stuff without their knowledge or consent and things like that. And so for me, that's not natural. That's not normal to, uh, to expose that part of my life a lot. Um, and that was always uh, a big thing for me. I just, I didn't feel comfortable doing that ever. And so even on my blog, um, if I talk about um, an issue or, um, you know, a challenge that a child is having, I try to apply it in a very broad way so that parents everywhere can relate to this challenge or this um, story, mm -hmm. struggle, whatever this family is going through. Because it's not just my family or your family that's going through this. There are a number of different ways and views that we can look at this. And um, I've always been sort of um, more about... Um, 
I guess talking about, I don't want to say about me, but talking about my role as a mother or how motherhood fits into everything else that I do and um, how the world is not set up for motherhood really and for mothers to do anything else but be mothers. Um, yeah, and so I sort of take things from that perspective and I find that that um, changes depending on what platform I'm on. I am much meaner on Twitter than I am on Facebook or Instagram. <laughs> I am. I have no patience on Twitter. I uh, I do not suffer fools. I have no patience for you know um, conspiracy theories or idiocracy or anything like that on there. And I'm quite blunt about it. Whereas on other social networks, I try to be a bit more um, what's the word diplomatic. On Twitter, I'm not so diplomatic. So why, why is it, that? Why is that? I don't know why. Um, I just feel like first of all, I find Facebook, uh, especially these days. So now that we're you know six months almost seven months into this COVID thing, we've all been living on social, you know, for a long time now. And um, I don't necessarily want to hear people's opinions on certain things over and over again on social, right? So the things that I tend to post about on Facebook are very different than what I post about on Twitter. Uh, Facebook is usually about, you know, family things or recipes or, um, you know, that kind of home-based things and Twitter for me is more of a global conversation about what's happening so that's why I'm not as nice on Twitter because things are not as nice as they are in the in the bigger sphere of things right that's where I get more political and that's where I get more um uh act like activist mode kind of thing yeah mm -hmm. and then um yeah on my other social channels I'm much quieter about those things because I I can't handle I don't want to manage the emotions that come with that. You know, there's so much that you open yourself up to. Whereas when you go on Twitter, you can kind of, you know, blah, put it out there. You can engage if you want to, or you just dump it and you walk away. You know, on Facebook and Instagram, I find that's more challenging because again, it's with people that you know generally. And I don't want to um, put more stress on people either when they read my feed. I'd rather they come to my feed on Facebook or Instagram and feel better and not necessarily as stressed as they are on other platforms or with other content that they might see. Well, no, that's, that's really good yeah, advice too, I get, you know, for sure. So Robin, I know that uh, you, you stepped out, but we're sort of talking about um, revealing the true personal Robin as opposed and you to- know, You know that what you see is what you get. I just share everything, the good, the bad and the ugly, but I, you know, I don't have, like lots of people in my life that I have to go and go, hey, is it cool to share this or not share this? So um, if there's something, I will ask someone, but mostly I'm like, I'm just going to be truly me and share everything. Like if you look at stuff, and I'm hopeless at social media, right? but like I'll share the stuff about my brother's suicide, my wanting to kill myself, my like struggle with um, dealing with mental health and having to get through it, the stuff about I am so in the wrong body Urgh! and I'm not going to change this one for a multitude of reasons. But I, for me, one of the things that I hear from people is because I'm just me and completely open it allows them to share differently too. And so that's my purpose. My purpose in life is having people feel free to be themselves, whatever that is, whether people like them or not like them. Um, and, you know, I, I have people contact me and go, what the hell, why did you say that? And I'm like, well, that's what's happening. And you actually don't have to read it or look at it if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. so that that's kind of me and I, I think there's a place for all different levels of sharing depending mm -hmm. on people's uh, and this is a completely made up word comfortability that's um, a good word that's a real word yeah two yeah. points comfortability totally a word um, in the dictionary <laughs> there you go um but it, but it is that place I think there's a place for people like me that just put everything out there and I think um all the way down to people who are still like I'm scared to share or for whatever reason I don't and I I think if we can encompass all of that whether people 
are sharing or not sharing, but create that space that allows them if they wish. That's the piece for me that's super important. I liken that a lot to songwriting because a lot of people do cover songs, for example, and a lot of people that I've, I've done a lot of songwriting workshops and a lot of songwriting sessions to help people sort of get their songwriting rolling and, and they'll, they'll start to write something and they'll feel like that's too cheesy or too personal. But I really, it's a strong thing I've said many, many, many times. And it's, if you're not giving the one go of yourself through the art, you're only, you're only one art, which is even your mouth, which is even just like the, your verbal diarrhea on the computer, you know, or like your opinions or whatever. It's, it's, if you're not giving your one go of you you've cheated yourself first of all but also why would you why like there's already everybody else you don't have to agree with everybody else there's already that song's already been played that song's already been written and some of the songs that i've you know been most uh, given the most accolade for are the ones when i just went for it and i just said exactly what i was thinking and exactly what i was feeling and it was really like too dirt really dirty or really really too very vulnerable and i yeah i don't really think that there's space for i mean everyone has a right to keep their privacy as much to themselves as possible i'm definitely not saying you're you're wasting your time if you're not vocal about your life <clears throat> but by all means your your one experience your one round is there's nothing to be ashamed of there's nothing to be scared of and again back to the right people will stick around the right people will listen and it's so it's there's you're really it's it's almost your duty if you have something to say and you want to say it, to say it, you know, and um, and yeah, to, to just not feel, not censor yourself because you're worried about what other people are going to say or think. You know, you're talking about your brother's suicide. Like my sister died, and I wrote it in many songs. It came out in many songs. A lot of people didn't even know that that was what it was about. But in interviews along the way, I had no problem talking about it, and. You know whether whether it's an angle that they were like oh that makes a good story like f them like who cares it's it's my story and i'm not gonna you know censor it and uh that's that's kind of our duty to ourselves to uh to be as true to our you know with what you totally ties in linda with what you were talking about you know about not being afraid to you know should, i should have said that or should i not have said that or like the easiest way to sleep with integrity every night is just open your flappers and talk the way you want to all night and go to bed knowing you didn't lie, you didn't hold back, you didn't, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. And then, like, as, as Robin was saying, it gives people permission. You know, when you see somebody else sharing and open about their own lives, it gives you permission to share more or just go, oh, wow, that's normal. I didn't, I didn't know that. If I hadn't heard that, I wouldn't have known that was normal. And I would, I, you know, you carry so much of us carry around that shame burden that this is personal and it's only happened to me. And, and so when we see other people being brave, it gives us permission to be brave. And I think I, that's amazing. Totally. I, I, think, no, I think that's the really big thing, right? People don't often live their truth because they're scared about what other people think. And that was part of the reason for calling the company that, right? Mm -hmm. And adding that in the tagline, but it's this place I know when I've done keynotes and I've talked about, oh, sitting on the sofa and thinking about, do I still want to be here? And people are like, you really think that? And I'm like, yeah, like, like all these people that like people look up to and go, oh, there's the Holy Grail. They're all dealing with shit too. They're just not talking about it. And if we can all talk about it, that's why I always say Bell Let Talk Day, that's great. Mental Health Awareness Day, it's great. But why aren't we talking about this every day? Why isn't it just a, a, did you break your leg? Oh, did you have like a psychotic break? Oh, like just, yeah. Sorry, you've got me all fired up. Today. Oh, no, totally. Especially people, that, especially people that have a voice or a business or, or someone that has a, a, a platform. I mean, like, you know, for myself, to be a musician that has fans that's like you know i'm not like taylor swift or anything like that where if she spoke about it, everyone would be like mental health then everybody can have mental health you know but uh but i mean in our small microcosmic ways we can make that impact you know like you know the fact that everyone thinks i'm just like this super happy super goofy like you know like rami she's fine uh not all the time bros you know what i mean like just surprise it happens to everybody that's kind of good to remind people 
So it's all coming full circle. We're healing the witch's wound, aren't we? Healing the witch's wound. It's <laughs> <Yeah>. over. <laughs> Uh, Susie, what's your business? What do you, what do you, you didn't mention that and I don't know what it is. Uh, I'm a social media and PR agency in Winnipeg oh. here. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I am on social media all day, you know, for work and stuff like that. And sometimes I just have to check out and put my phone away and yeah. that's enough, you know? So that. yeah. I'm yeah. on my phone with for work like not that's how I work I work from home on my phone to do all the things yeah. I do and I do a lot which, of which we're all doing right now too right so I think that there's a genuine yeah. uh fatigue that comes along with being on these things all the time and not actually connecting with the people that we see or you know that we live with or any of those things right so I think that it's interesting to me that you know, we are finding ways to connect, obviously, and to um, support each other virtually on mediums like uh, media like this. And then sometimes, too, I think that it's a natural response to all of that stimuli to cocoon sometimes and just go, OK, I've given as much as I can of myself right now. I've taken in as much information as I want to. I need to stop this stimuli and just be calm, be still, okay. read a book, knit something, cook something, you know, fold something. I don't know. But those things that are not attached to electronic media or to even like TV and things like that, just to be still and to find peace and solace in the stillness, right? And that's okay to be bored and to be, you know, quiet and just with exactly, our own thoughts. Exactly in the boredom that you get creative. And that's what, you know, like people always say, like, I'm bored, you know, or if someone's on board, it's like, good, be bored for a while. Something will pop up. You know, it's yeah. like, I don't, if I don't sit still long enough, I'll never write a song, you know, like, and, and it is true, like about uh, the social media and everything. Like when I start finding myself drifting off on my phone, now I'm just scooching Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, I've, I've been on the here for a couple hours already doing stuff that was actually productive. Now I could probably, you know, do something better with my time. Not to say that I'm perfect. Of course, I'm as idle and brain dead on those things as anybody else. But it's like I was telling you like that's that I decided to just, okay, what can I do to entertain myself instead of getting things to entertain me? And that was when I said, choose a good book. And like I did, you know, I wrote that today, that the post and I started that yoga challenge I'm not a yoga person. I've gone to yoga, but I was like, you know what? I've got a yoga mat and I've got this thing. I could just YouTube a class. And it's, it's something that, you know, cause I'm not a gardener. I'm not a, like, I do crochet. I do. <laughs> no way. No uh, way. I, do. <laughs> I, do. I know nobody in interviews in the past. Someone's like, tell us something about us. Tell like something about yourself that no one would ever know. I'm like, I crochet. That's just like, oh, sort of like wink, wink. <laughs> I was going to ask you, Robin, um, because yes, you have this, uh, you, you are an open book. Have you ever had a hard time uh, telling somebody something or, uh, or sharing something? Like I, I, I find it very hard to believe that you would be speechless or wordless or stuck on words, but well, yeah, you just laugh it off. No, but I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm curious because, you know, we've had numerous conversations here, but then also I was, you know, happy to actually see you in person and you are exactly the same. So, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, there's, there's times and truth be told, I use humor to like get through uncomfortable places. I, you know, I've, I've told you, I've just started dating someone. And they said to me the other day, oh, you're deflecting, you're using humor. And I was like, mm, because, yeah. because it was about feelings. And like, it was a good thing, but I was still like, ooh. Um, there, there's been times it's been tough, like, um, and I think as I've gotten older, I've learned to be like much more in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I, I was talking to Cynthia this morning in London, right? And she's just written some blog stuff about accepting our feelings and emotions and just being with them. And why are we in this place that it's not okay to feel, that it's not okay to express whatever it is, good, bad or ugly, of our feelings, our emotions. And so we were having this really cool conversation that often we're... we're we grow up and, and people are like, don't share everything about you. And 
I think when I get into that place of, oh, it feels a little uncomfortable, that's when I push through it and share more. Because I'm like, there's a growth piece here. Um, but yes, yeah, certainly I've had my fair share of moments where I think about that, um, you know, healing the witch's wounds piece where I like want to say something and I'm like, what's going to happen if I say this? And I think for me now I've gone, what's the worst thing that could happen? That person goes, oh, you, and doesn't talk to me anymore. And really, if that's where they go, were they someone I wanted in my life anyway? Famous um, and, what's and the as thing Aussie, like I'm renowned for being, people tell me I'm blunt and tactless. And I go, no, I'm just truthful. I will share how it is, how it feels. And if I don't like something, I'll say, oh, I didn't really like that. That's not a slight on someone else. That's about this is how it was for me. And I think if we can stay in that space and go, this felt tough for me or this is how I feel rather than, you know, we talk about it in all the communication stuff, right? Rather than you're an ass, like, hey, this, this doesn't work for me. And if we can just stay in that and stay in that moment, I think, that's the piece that helps me. So even when it feels awkward, because there are times, um, I just go, hmm, I'm just going to be in the moment and go through it anyway. Okay. Point taken. Wow. So we've talked Halloween. We've talked music. We've talked witches. We've talked prime. <laughs> and, oh, and yeah, just saying how you feel. Well, I think we covered a, covered a lot here, ladies. I, I feel good about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh no it's like yeah I'm in therapy. <laughs> yeah yeah you're in therapy you don't have to you don't have to do yoga now you you've sat I here through this. i already did it i did it before I, well, I do it right when i wake up or else i'm not gonna do it you okay. know for your day you can just be like eh just right when you wake up okay well again you know thank you so much for joining in this conversation and i just wanted to uh mention next week I'm um, still, still along the same uh, lines about talking about mental health and wellness, but uh, more importantly in our ethnic communities and how, and I hate, and I hate to say it, but I mean, racism is, is still growing. It's still, it's, it's very harmful. It's very hurtful. There's a lot of different campaigns going through the different Asian communities. And so, yeah, we'll be tackling that broad issue. So I invite all of you and Rami then maybe you can join us and play a song okay yeah sorry I just don't always want to be a musician not every day <laughs> no <laughs> no oh okay all right so namaste thank you very much for joining <laughs> it's really nice to see you guys and nice to meet you guys and thanks for having me Tracy to help promote yes into. yes go so on to kurtzsideconcerts.ca book your concerts people oh, that's yeah, awesome I think so I got three, three, everyone. three ladies I think are gonna, I think we got, I think we're good. You too, Tracy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Halloween. Yeah, Halloween. except I'm gonna request you, Rami. Okay. Hey, I've got four <laughs> shows coming up then. One, two, three, four, let's go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye-bye. Thank you, thanks Thank for you.